of the Darkness is the second album to be released by British hard rock slash heavy metal band Sacred Mother Tongue. This album has been a long time coming for this hotly tipped band, almost four years in fact. I could explain myself why there has been such a long wait, but why not ask Darren South, lead singer of Sacred Mother Tongue himself? Not because we haven't had any material, or not because we didn't want to do a second album or anything like that. It was down to other commitments and, and timing that didn't work out. I mean, as you mentioned before, Andy's guitar, solo guitar career has really taken off in a very big way over the last couple of years. And he's now well respected within, you know, as, as being one of the best guitarists in the world. Now, obviously, with that comes a lot of commitment and a lot of potential for, for what he's doing in his solo career. And, you know, in the meantime, he's released a solo album and he's gone off and done clinic tours and stuff like that and, uh, and guitar shows and all the rest of it. So he's taken up a lot of the time. Um, and we were kind of happy to sit and wait rather than rush an album, you know, and cram an album for a period of time. This wait has given the band time to possibly mature with their new writing. What that period of time's given us is the ability to relax and I suppose mature a little bit within our, our writing quality or our approach to writing. I think the idea being that if you rush an album or if you just write a lot of songs and then record them as they are, you're sort of, you're leaving yourself open to the, the coercion of timing and the scene and what is on at the minute and what pe what you think people want. You, I think we also probably would have written The Ruin of Man Mark II if we'd have rushed this album. Um, it would have been more along the same lines. We wouldn't have had time to, to relax and, and just write from the heart, if you know what I mean. So with Darren South providing some extra information, has this band walked towards the light with their latest offering? I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! <laughs> So, if you're a fan of SMT's previous album, The Ruin of Man, you'll notice that screaming has been removed from their latest offering. This removal of vocal technique leans the album more towards a hard rock styling than ever before. But why were these vocals removed? Yeah, again, I think it kind of comes back to the same thing. I mean, if, if we had have written another album very soon after doing The Ruin of Man, I probably would have put Screaming in because I would have felt the need to because I felt like that's what people knew us for. We did singing and screaming and we were that type of band and all the rest of it. Plus there was also a very a very pigeonhole thing. It's like, are you a metal band or are you a rock band? And that was quite a tough sort of thing to work around in the, in the earlier stages, especially when The Ruin of Man was out. It was like, who can we tour with? You know, where do we fit in in the market? And I think there was a lot of worry about that from management and from the label and, and from us as a band and the fans. You know, people didn't really know where to place us. And um, I think if we hadn't have taken the time, I probably would have just churned it out and I would have missed out on some great melody hooks and, and stuff like that. But what happened was I didn't physically decide not to scream. I just started writing the new album um, along to, you know, demos and stuff that Andy had written. And I was, I don't know, I just found I was so inspired by the stuff he was doing. And I felt so comfortable, you know, writing catchy melodies or, or writing hooks that I think, you know, I thought fitted well. I kind of got carried away. So before I knew what was in, what was going on, we were sort of seven tracks in and I hadn't done any screaming. And the general consensus was that I was writing better stuff for it. So I think at that point I thought, right, well, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and see what happens and it couldn't have been a better choice. Darren's vocal leads each song with a softly spoken authority that is both incredibly soothing to listen and will get you more than eager to headbang to the ferocious arrangements of each song. Adding screaming would just seem like a juvenile way of adding basic emotions to the songs that Darren delivers more than well enough by saying. It makes sense though for his great vocal delivery as his song's lyrics are very personal towards him. The concept? Yeah, yeah, well, I'd, um, I'd written a bunch of songs. I mean, basically, I, I, um, I went for a period where I had um, you know, a bit of a lull in my life and through that came a bit of a writer's block and, you know, there was new songs bouncing around but there was no lyrics and there was no melodies or anything and I was really struggling to get inspiration and, you know, to actually get anything into the band. Um, and that went on for a while, but I suppose at the point that I decided I got to pull myself out of this and, and work it out and get my head back in the game, um, I kind of drawed upon my feelings and, and my emotions of, of that moment, and um, I started to write a couple of songs. And as soon as I 
soon as I wrote something, you know, the floodgates opened again and that was that. Uh, I wrote everything. These lyrics, though, aren't delivered with your usual slant of bitterness and depression. Usually, you will always have some sort of hope to cling onto by the end of each song. This could be thanked to the layout of the album. This means that you won't be bogged down with repetitive lyrical themes. I think through that process, I basically wrote a bunch of the songs um, from the point of view of, not from a depressing point of view, but more more a fact of you know coming out of that, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, I suppose. And then if you pardon the pun, there goes the uh, the whole the whole darkness and light thing. And it's the idea that you know from from any darkness, no matter where you are, um, you, you will always find that light. You just got know where to look or know how to push yourself enough to find it. What also helps the songs from not being repetitive is the exceptional quality of melodies produced from all band members, mainly so from the guitarist. Now, if I wanted to use my head and give a technical and analytical analysis of his guitaring style, I would say his variation on the guitar wrists and licks mainly focus on the lower range of the guitar. This gives each song much more bass when amplified by his constantly riffing and licking. This is an expert use of the guitar, of which, from a technical standpoint, must be admired. Now, if I were to listen to this album with my heart as a general fan of rock, I would say this. Oh my god, this is f***ing awesome. If you do not bang your head, there is something wrong with you. I literally could not stop headbanging and pretending to play the guitar while listening to this album. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of Out of the Darkness. There is one flaw, however. Each song follows the same kind of musical format of fast tempos with strong riffing and headbanging. Whilst each song is very varied from one another, it can be argued that not having some slower styled hard rock songs, that it can be repetitive for some people. Besides, by the second last song, I could have used a break. To add on this even more, some slower styled songs would respect the maturity of the lyrics in this album even further and help the listener go on that journey that Sacred Mother Tongue want us to go on. I'd like you to think of the album as a journey. Um, it's not a concept album as such, although it does have an underlying concept to it. Um, but you will go on a journey with this. You'll go on a, a, a journey with... Um, the band's maturity with writing. Um, you'll hear the changes in it. You'll hear what I would call astonishingly good production. I mean, our producer has done such a good job with it. It's it's unreal, and it rivals some of my favourite produced albums ever. <laughs> so, um, so I, I'm really, really chuffed with the way it's turned out production-wise. I think he's done such a good job. Um, if you're one of those guys that's a fan of, uh, you know, a band that's well polished and well produced, then you'll like it regardless of the songs. Um, but second to that, I, I do think you will follow the journey in, uh, you know, in a very, in what is quite a personal matter. Something will change, I believe. When we leave, there is But nonetheless, this album is superb, an altar bridge for the British music scene. This band does an amazing job of creating adrenaline surge songs, but with the lyrical depth and maturity only found in the rarest of bands. This band has such a promising future. If you're a fan of hard rock, especially bands like Alter Bridge, this is an absolute no-brainer of a purchase. If not, you still need to check this album out.